Hey guys, just a quick heads up that I do have a table of contents down in the description box below for this very new style of video. I'm basically revamping the old Rogue Construction series that I used to do only on Dev Pro, and I thought this new spin would be really fun to do, but it's kind of long. So you can feel free to go ahead, check the timestamps out. I'll take you to the different sections of the video, and be sure to let me know what you think down below. So let's jump right into it. Hey everybody, this is JD Gaming back today with a very interesting new type of video that I've not done on this channel before. So, we're basically throwing all the ideas together. You know, Zombie Horde is this new deck. I hear the $30 budget deck is a fun thing people like to do. And um, instead of just doing that, because a lot of the builds end up looking pretty similar and you know it's just like oh this is what you're able to do i figured let's one up that um very rarely do i show my thought process for actually building the decks even though i do with all these in-depth deck profiles and so i decided let's revamp my old rogue construction series a <laughs> long long time viewers may remember i used to do dev pro replays on my channel and um part of that was a two episode series of rogue construction that never fully took off where basically i went ahead and i built desk bots and synchrons and i was gonna like develop them over time you know just some rough construction of these archetypes that i don't necessarily play in real life all that much at least at the time, and um, now I basically went ahead and um, was thinking, let's go and do that, but let's show my thought process for new decks. Well, that will be the new Rogue Construction, totally revamped for this, and I think it's perfectly fitting for this. So I went and bought three of this Zombie Horde deck. It's been a while since I've seen these cards. I remember being very excited when I saw them in Japan, but I don't even remember what they all do. So we're just going to go ahead and do this, and... Um, yeah, so we'll take a look and we're going to build this deck step by step for you guys. And it's kind of going to be a product opening as well. So, you know, best of every single world, you know, especially the zombie world, right? And um, yeah, as I do this, I'll kind of talk through the product. Here's your like little beginner's guide. It's kind of cool that they have like the new cards shown in here. But it's a, it's basically a condensed rule book that doesn't even give you how to actually play the entire game in its complexity. We got the mat, of course. Um, this is one of the boss monsters. And then... Uh, that's one of the boss monsters and um, then on the other side it's like product promotion placement thingy majig and then uh, this is pretty cool because it's kind of like a, this is how you play the deck which is what I always talk about first step of building any deck is to establish the theme and to build the core that supports your goals and this is literally that so it basically focuses around zombie world this card apparently necro world banshee gets a zombie world we go and summon our big boss monsters we can make zombie world stronger by using glow up Volver, i guess uh glow up bloom glow up bloom gets stronger by zombie world i'm guessing and then everything is a zombie so you can use these new speller traps which i think is pretty cool and then we have some tools to synchro summon our red eyes zombie necro dragon as a boss Boss monster and then powerful classics here I see Mizuki is an instant staple book of life is probably a staple it's monster of born metaverse I don't know honestly just because this isn't necro valley so that's a huge issue um, so probably won't be playing that kosh is interesting lets you shuffle things away without destroying or targeting so pretty interesting tech choice depending on how searchable it is and then pyramid turtle is a classic it may or may not see play just because you're able to go and ram it into your opponent's monster which makes it a very fast creature but you never want to really you know just set it and pass turn one so let's see what we end up doing here so i'm actually going to zoom us in here and take advantage of that glorious 4k here i like the dual links advertisements they have on the back here too man times sure have changed they've never done this in the past so the way i'm going to do this just so i don't spend 40 minutes talking about 40 cards is i'm going to separate first this is a new card and we'll talk about that this is a new card we'll talk about that that's a new card we'll talk about that and so on we're separating you know just what cards are new and what cards are not and then uh we'll, we'll, we'll discuss from there so let's see it looks like a bunch of reprints here and you know like now you can kind of see what the deck is like as well um Mainly because everyone is already doing, you know, oh, this is the deck opening, and this is the finalized, you know, deck that we have. I think this card's new. Uh, that card looks new. It has, yeah, it has the boss monster, so that's definitely new. Um, this card's not, 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 
whatnot. And uh, yeah, basically I wanted to do something different. I thought this is the best, you know, JD touch this card, Return of the Zombies. I think this is new. So we'll put that here, Haunted Shrine. I don't know this card, so I'll say it's new. This card is not new, not new, not new, not new, but really good and uh, not new. So basically that was your, you know, two minute deck profile. End of video, guys. No, we're gonna go ahead now and talk about the new stuff, the good stuff, and uh, see what type of a deck we can put together looking at these cards. So first off, we have Red Eyes Zombie Necro Dragon. So this guy has the same stats as Red Eyes, except it's a zombie, it looks like. One tuner, one or more non tuner so it's totally generic. Gains 100 attack and defense for each zombie on the field, so both sides, that's pretty good. And then in the graveyards, that's really good. And, um, you know, you wouldn't play a card for a power boost, but that's a very, very sizable increase on a solid 24 already. So I like that. When another monster, or zombie monster, is destroyed by battle, rather, you could special summon a zombie monster from either graveyard to the field. You can only use this effect over a zombie necro dragon once per turn. I kind of want to cheese something with Pyramid Turtle and this card, so maybe Pyramid Turtle will end up being filler be because of that effect. Um, it makes it also really tempting to play Zombie World, but I'll have to see what the other new cards do in order to see if it's really worth building heavily around Zombie World, or if we should do special summons for other reasons. The big thing with Zombies is you're able to do special summons and turn them into other things, like Synchro Zombies were a huge thing back in the day. Xyz Zombies, I think, saw some play. Um, Link Zombies have a lot of potential as well, but we don't have any of those other cards. It's just Red Eye Zombie Necro Dragon in our extra deck, which limits what we can do with just the structures. But I'm sure I'll go ahead and build some other zombie based strategies as well. There was one deck in particular I was wanting to do with Shirinui Solitaire, so that's the main reason I was really excited about this deck. Then we have Tatsu Necro, of course, the undead version of our favorite level 3 Synchro Tuner. Um, Flip stats looks like 500 attack, 1700 defense. If it's normal summoned or set monster would be used as synchro material, one monster in your hand can be material. Uh, that's pretty cool because that's just Tatsunoko's effect, but it's a normal summonable guy. Um, and then it says, if you do this, all materials for that summon are banished, including this guy it looks like. Instead of being sent to the grave, you cannot special summon monsters except zombie monsters while you control this, but I don't think that's going to matter because everything you summon is going to be a zombie in this strategy. So this, I'm thinking, just initial impression, it's a three of, just because it gets you your Necro Dragon without an additional normal summon or additional special summon being required. Just no normal, no extra setup, summon this guy, have a level four, boom. If you have Mizuki, then that becomes really, really disgusting because then Mizuki lets you summon something else and Necro Dragon can kill something. If you have Zombie World up, then it'll go and summon another thing. That's a lot of snowballing advantage. I like this card quite a lot. So I like how they revamped Tatsu Necro or Tatsunoko. Uh, fun fact. That means like Seahorse's Child or Dragon's Child, something like that. I think it's Seahorse's Child, because um, Ko is Child. No means like apostrophe S essentially. So Tatsu, I think, is Seahorse. So it's like Tatsu no Ko would be that thing's child, whatever that thing is. Anyway, Doom King Balerdrock. Sounds German. I'm pretty sure this was the guy I could not uh, pronounce when his name came out on uh, the fans nation. Level 8, uh, Dark Zombie, 2800 attack, 2000 defense, like where that's going. Uh, during the standby phase, if a face-up field spell is in the zone, and this card is in your graveyard, so I guess this card's really encouraging us to play Zombie World, you can special summon this card in defense position, um, so you can't attack with it, but 2000 is not terrible, I suppose. Um, I think this was the OP card, though. I think this has the two effects. You can only use this effect once per turn, uh, once per chain, during uh, or when a zombie monster except this guy activates its effect, except during the damage step. Quick effect, you can apply one of these effects, but you cannot apply the same effect for the rest of the turn. And it says either negate the effect, which is kind of weird that it says you can't activate a quick effect that negates potentially during the damage step, probably because it may or may not, um, but negate that effect or banish a monster from the field or graveyard at resolution. So you don't even target. This is a solid monster. I want to build around it with three of it, which probably means I'm going to be forced to play Zombie World at two copies uh, or more, depending on how accessible it is. But uh, yeah, they talked about Necro World Banshee, which is a card that's able to go ahead and search it. So let's see how she searches. I like this artwork. It's pretty cool. Uh, level four, Zombie 1800 attack, always good. 200 defense. Zombie World in a field zone cannot be destroyed by card effects. Also, neither player can target it with card effects. Ooh, I like that protection effect. Quick effect. You can banish this card from your hand 
or not from your hands, excuse me, that'd be really good, but uh, it says from your field or graveyard, activate one zombie world directly from your hand or deck. From hand or deck is really good, because that means even if you have the zombie world already, you can go ahead and activate it, which gives us some leeway if we wanted to play three copies of that and this. Um, let's see, you can only use this effect of Necro World Banshee once per turn. All right, I like that. The quick effect part isn't the most important thing, other than if she's threatened, you can get value out of it by adding, you know, a zombie world to your arsenal. And that'll power things up. Biggest thing I like about this, though, is the fact that she protects your zombie world. So let's say you use this thing, you banish it, and then you go ahead and you, uh, you use your zombie world, right? If there's some way to bring a copy of her out to the field, you can go ahead and protect that zombie world immediately. That's probably why they didn't make it so you banish her, or um, it's probably right, rather, they made you banish her, because if you could send her to the grave, fetch, and then revive her, she'd be pretty darn good. I don't know if that would be OP in this deck or not, per se, but a very solid card. Um, it's, I guess, the deck's terraforming, because we don't have that in this deck, as uh, lame as that is. Metaverse, uh, good reprint, but not the best for this strategy, I feel. Um, terraforming would have been much more competitive, but nonetheless, uh, this, I think, kind of makes up for it. I like how they're making new field spell cards um, and field searchers in these new structures. Kind of like, um, this reminds me of, uh, what was his name? The guy who starts with A, uh, <laughs> in uh, the dark, uh, the Lair of Darkness deck, but I'm, I'm just not remembering. I'm, I'm blanking on his name, but that guy was cool. Um, it's like that guy. Glow Up Bloom, level 1 zombie tuner, zero attack and defense. I like how this is an upgraded bulb. Uh, one of my favorite tuners there. If this card is sent, or I don't know, if this card, yeah, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard to add a level 5 or higher zombie from your deck to your hand. I like that. Or, if zombie world's in a field zone specifically, you can special summon it from your deck instead. That's really good, especially with Baller Draw who's now set up because you have zombie world on the field and you know um in either case you cannot special summon for the rest of the turn except zombies okay i don't care in this deck in particular and then you can only use this effect of glow up bloom once per turn this i really like the fact that it triggers on sent to the grave is a little iffy but the fact that i can just go ahead normal summon my i don't know i, I think um shinnery solitaire is in here which means we can go yuna zombie right and um gozuki is in here too i believe so you can go ahead and normal either of those guys or foolish this thing and instantly get a search basically extra value out of your rota i like that um uh, this is probably going to be a two to three of just because of its power but it is searchable and you know it has to be sent to the grave for its effect to work so i don't know it may end up being a two of it's not a bad filler though because if you could discard it off of something like zombie master it's not terrible to get an extra search off of that to recoup the loss so zombie necronized spell card um if a level five or higher zombie monster is on the field and it says anywhere on the field that's pretty weird target a monster your opponent controls take control of it this is change of heart Ooh. okay we're playing three of this thing maybe two of this but again like it's one of those things where like if we had more cards to fill the deck probably be a two of uh just because i don't think this card's searchable in the strategy yet as far as i know uh, from the cards but then um if you do draw this, even if you go for, I mean, like, whatever, like, it's such a powerful card. I feel like you would want to lean towards three. Um, I like this card a lot. Uh, as long as it doesn't have restrictive text. During your main phase, if this is in your grave, you could shuffle one of your banished zombies into the deck, like Mizuki. And if you do, set this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use one zombie and recognize effect per turn and only once that turn. Holy crap. So basically, um, what this means is the turn I go ahead and activate this, it goes to the graveyard. I cannot recycle it that same turn because I've already activated and used that first effect. So I have to wait until next turn, at which point I can go ahead and banish or return my banished zombie to add it back to the field. Not only will it banish when it leaves the field, but I can't go ahead and activate it immediately because I just use the effect to recycle it. So it has to be turn, space, turn, that I get to use it. In three turns, I get to use it twice. But change of heart, man, that's so good. And the fact that you're able to go ahead and set this up in the graveyard through other means as well, pretty interesting if it didn't have that restrictive text at the end where you can only use one of its effects per turn and you could just like foolish burial goods this thing and then instantly set it and activate it Ooh, this card would have been nuts but um still really really good it's change of heart with very minimal restriction i mean you're planning on having the level five or higher zombies so i think this card is going to be solid uh three of in this deck we have zombie power struggle which is a quick play spell um, I, I thought this was uh, one of the alien guys, but I think that's uh, Balerdruk or whatever. Yeah, Baler, Balerdruk. And then we have target a zombie on the field, so either field, and it says until the end of this turn, it, it gains a thousand attack or loses a thousand attack. So I guess. 
Oh, you, you choose your opponent's guy, reduce its attack by a thousand. So I, I, I gotcha. Uh, during the main phase, if this card is in the graveyard, you can shuffle one of your banished zombies into the deck. Oh, is that a pattern with the spell cards now? So you can recycle the spells like they're undead. Um, if you do, set this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. Uh, you can only use this effective zombie power struggle once per turn. Uh, I like the fact that they're trying to get more value out of it, but I don't know how much a thousand attack boost matters. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, there are the search effects and stuff of um, some cards, or not search effects. The Necronized Dragon, Necro Dragon, uh, does function by killing stuff in battle. But I feel like its own attack boost is enough. I don't know how good this card is. Maybe a one or two of just for filler in this deck. But I don't think it's like the most competitive thing. I would not want to like this would not be my first pick. Return of the Zombies, another new card. Um, ooh, really cool artwork, actually. If you look at that, that's like Goblin Zombie. That's like Bone Mouse. Um, we have Glow Up Bloom there. What's the, that? That that over there is like Dark Spirit of the Silent. Um, you have, you have uh, is that like Despair from the Dark or one of those guys? And then we have like Soul Absorbing Bone Tower. Holy crap, this card's like amazing in terms of just artwork here. I like this. Is this card new? I, th I think this card is new. It, it just looks new to me, but I like when it's like, um, here's an artwork that shows all these other monsters and other cards from back in the day. Banish one zombie monster on the field. Um, so I guess removal, kill your opponent's guy if you have zombie world up. Then special summon a zombie from the graveyard of that card's controller to your, wait, no, to their field. Oh, okay, okay. Um, in defense position. So I see this as I can either go ahead and banish my opponent's strong monster and give them a crappy one that I can then kill in battle, which isn't bad. Um, or I can go ahead and uh, banish one of my own guys and then um, recycle it with something else, kind of like a reincarnation. Cool thing though is it says banish a monster on the field, then special summon. It does not say target anything. So this card actually becomes insane removal. If Zombie World's in the picture, this is a two to three of for sure because of how versatile it is. Um, Again, I guess uh, that's just based on the first effect. I really need to read the rest of the card before I decide. Uh, hopefully there's no bad issue of it. If this card is in your graveyard, you can shuffle one of your banished zombies into the deck. And if you do set this card, but banish it when it leaves the field, you can only use one of these for turn. Okay, so it's just got the same undead zombie uh, spell trap flavor text now. I, I like that a lot. That's really, really cool. So this card is a solid two to three of, I think. Uh, just the ability to remove things uh, without targeting is absolutely nuts. You're banishing things. So, I mean, this, this is good. Like, even if you draw this without zombies, Zombie world you could just recycle and revive one of your own guys and that's not terrible because it inherently lets you go and recycle a banished zombie so banish your own zombie that you may have wanted later bring it back to your deck and then send it to the graveyard with one of your other cards so definitely a powerful card um i would run i, I think it's going to be three of just because of you know the size of the deck um and trying to fill it up with just three structure decks and finally we have haunted shrine you know oh wow jd you could talk forever about like eight cards or whatever here what is it one two three four five six seven eight nine cards let's be fair nine cards here um <laughs> normal trap if you control no monsters uh, i don't like that condition that's why i don't like all the mummy target one zombie monster in your graveyard special summon it Okay, so it's a Call of the Haunted. Can you activate this from your hand, though, or something? Uh, if you control no monsters, you can banish this card from your graveyard. The target a zombie in your graveyard, special summon it, but its effects are negated. So first time it's not negated. If this is in your graveyard, it does get negated. You can only use this effect of Haunted Shrine once per turn and once that turn. Oh, only use one shine effect per turn and once that turn. Uh, I don't like the stipulation on both of those effects to have no monsters on the field. Like, you know, like, you're a zombie deck. Like, even if you link all your guys away, like, this isn't Sky Strikers or something where you're constantly having no monsters in your main monsters or anything. And even that deck maintains field presence through its extra monsters. So, like, um, I don't know. If this were, like, maybe this could be useful in, like, a Shiranui version of the deck where you focus on, like, summoning Omega and, like, monsters that leave the field. But as far as it stands in this structure, I think this is a bust, kind of like that one quick play power spell. All right, so looking at this, those are the new players here. So let's go through, and I'm just going to brainstorm now looking through here, kind of like collect the deck, and we'll see what we do from here. All right, so I've gone ahead and liberated all three decks here, and the second thing that I want to do here is to take a quick overview from really far up you know just like a bird's eye view of what cards are and are not playable in this deck so just looking through here again this is my opinion and this is just like a quick pass of it but 
This card I think is playable, especially because it's just in your extra deck anyway. So we'll say yay. Um, actually, we'll put the yay cards on the right just because I think most of these cards uh, unfortunately will not be. Tatsunekro, this is a yay. And we're not considering numbers right now. We're just saying yes or no. Um, yay for the Balardrock. Yay for the Banshee. Yay for Glow Up Bloom. I like that effect. Kasha, overall it's a yay, but probably not a three of. Zombie Dragon. So this guy only works when it destroys a zombie by battle and sends it to the grave. And then it lets you steal that zombie. It's a high level guy, maybe a one of, but I'm leaning towards nay. So if anything, a tech. Um, so we'll, we'll say no for now. Goku N, um, not useful anymore. Back in the day, it was interesting as a normal summonable guy. That's very easy to summon for high power, but it's it's not useful anymore. 2400 beater does nothing. Endless Decay, if it special summon itself, regardless of your life, it'd be awesome, but it does not. So uh, I do not like this card right now. Uh, it's a nay. Paladin of Cursed Dragon may end up being filler, but the fact that you have to kill it in battle is really slow, because unlike Necro Dragon, where you go ahead and instantly kill something, get something, and you know your advantage rolls immediately when you kill something in battle. This thing, you need to go and activate its effect during main phase two. That's painfully slow and it's already a normal summon. There are better ways to get free monsters to the field, I feel. And um, I don't know, like this card isn't bad. Like it does let you special summon any monster that was destroyed by battle ever. Um, and that does have some reach. I remember this card being really hard to keep track of. Just like what cards died in battle and which were killed by card effects. But um, to be honest, filler at best. It's not something that's part of our core is basically it. Immortal Ruler. I do not like this card. The fact that it, it does not search. The fact that it reverse tutors from the grave of a field spell that you, you might as well just search from your deck again isn't the best. Um, so I don't like this card at all. It's just way too situational, I feel. Zombie Master. This may be a necessary evil just to have an enabler from our hand. It's not the best just because if you Ghost Ogre or if your opponent Ghost Ogres it, you lose both of your cards. But in Zombies, it's not the worst thing ever. It's a nice free special summon though. Like, let's you Book of Life this guy and then you bring something back. Then it's pretty good. It's also good for triggering Bloom, so I think it's going to end up seeing play. Then um, another stack here. Tristan. Now this card's interesting. It lets you add a zombie with zero defense in your graveyard to your hand, and there are a lot of those, just upon normal summon. It gains 300 attack when you control another zombie monster or monster, so it ends up becoming a 21 beater. Not a terrible card. I feel like this may be a filler card, like a one or two of, but um, definitely not a no. So we'll go ahead and put this over here on the yay side. Mizuki, three of, no question. Gozuki, two or three of, because it's a combination of Foolish Burial and um, a discard outlet. So I actually like this, probably three of. Shutendoji. Mm, so this is one of those effects. It's a utility card, right? So it's good if you can bring him out for free, but he doesn't have a special summon effect. Yeah, you could special summon him. So again, he may be a worthwhile one of filler or something, uh, but he's not really searchable other than Pyramid Turtle. There are better targets for Pyramid Turtle than this guy. So again, maybe a one of for searching, but um, for now, we're not planning on playing him. Pyramid Turtle, I want to play the cheese. It'll depend on how many other cards we have in this deck, but very solid filler just because you can crash into your opponent's guys at your choice. And then Goblin Zombie, I'll have to take another look at the defense values, but 1,200 or less defense is uh, quite good. You can add Mizuki or Gozuki or Tristan or Zombie Master. Um, let me see how the big guys stand. Glow Up Bloom is new. We can do that. Banshee we can do. Uh, can't do the big boss monster, Balardrock, and we can't do Tatsunekro. Those are the two big ones we can't do, but the fact that we're able to get Gozuki, Mizuki, and all those guys is pretty solid. Um, Would have been amazing in a Link deck, but since we don't even have Link monsters in this strategy, it's a solid card. Doesn't work with Tatsunekro for the quick, easy synchro, but overall pretty solid. Probably a two of or three of. Um, if nothing else, it's a very good... Um, very good uh, uh, material for things, and it's a very good uh, filler card. So we'll go and play that. Is sold the non-link is nowhere near as good because we don't have Xyz monsters, so its level modulation effects kind of terrible. Uh, whole idea is you Tristan this card from your graveyard to add it to your hand, and then you special summon her because you have Tristan. But she can only be special summon if you have Tristan. Otherwise, you, you can't even special summon her in other ways. That's really too restrictive. I do not want to play this card. We're not playing. Bell. Unfortunately, I love the artwork, but uh, we're not playing the card. We have Shiranui Solitaire. This thing searches out your Unizombie, which is, of course, a staple thing. Like, the, I didn't realize this was in this deck until I looked at the whole list. I was like, oh, wow, this was literally the types of cards I wanted to use with this deck. And they went ahead and gave it to us. So definitely going to play three of those. It's Lone Fire Blossom for Unizombie, who we may play two or three of. It's more Gozukis, but it's searchable. The searchability makes me want to play fewer. 
but it's also a 200 monster, which lets us make huge use out of the Baller Drunk. In this deck, it may end up being a 3 of because it doubles as a utility card to enable things, and it lets us get our plays off. Marionette might possibly tech if Zombie Roll, but it's way too conditional, I feel, uh, because you need to have Zombie Roll for this card to be useful most of the time, because how many zombies are you really going to play against, right? So probably not playing it. Beast of the Pharaoh is a big no. You need to, like, the idea is you synchro summon with this guy, and he comes back, and you could potentially synchro loop it if you have enough tuners, but um, it's just just not the best card. I, I I don't plan on using this. I don't think it'll be uh, that useful. It won't come up that much. Scape Ghost, too slow because it's a flip monster. Zombie Necronize, ooh yes, definitely playing that. I'm leaning towards no on Power Struggle, maybe a filler again, but it's not searchable or anything. Not the best. Zombie World, two to three, I'm not sure, depending on you know uh, how much uh, space we have and how really committed we are. The fact that we do have discard outlets and stuff though is, isn't terrible. Zombie World may end up going at three. Overpowering Eye, this to me is just a burn card. I don't like it. If it were searchable, I'd play one of as tech maybe, but um, it's not searchable. Monster of Born here, we're playing three of. Call of the Mummy, I don't like the condition of having no cards, and it doesn't have any other effects. Like, if it said you could discard a card to special summon a zombie, holy heck yeah, I would play this thing, but um, nah, not with that condition. Foolish Burial, one of, and we can't play the other two because, um, you know, a, a limited list here. We have uh, Monster Gate. This thing is limited as well. It's an interesting card. Uh, reason Reasoning, I think, would have been more fun. The tribute here is kind of annoying, uh, but it's not the end of the world if you tribute something, I suppose. It's a it's a maybe card, right? So I think it goes here. Drag down into the grave. Solid three of, I feel, knowing what your opponent has is awesome. Forcing your opponent to give you something is awesome because you just set everything that you know don't want in the grave and then everything else is a monster that you want. So I like that. Br uh, burial from a different dimension. I don't know if I'll three of it, but it's very powerful with Mizuki because even if you just use a single Mizuki with it, it becomes Monster Reborn. So, very powerful card. Shared Ride, two to three of probably depending on filler needs in this deck. Um, Return of the Zombies, we discussed this card's amazing. I think it's a two to three of. Um, Haunted Shrine, no thanks. Trap of the Imperial Tomb looks at first like Icarus Attack, but the big issue I have is it doesn't work. Uh, freely. You have to just trigger it upon your monster being summoned, which means you need some other quick effect that lets you use this like a Nicarus attack. It's not the best because of that, so none of this. Needle Bug Nest, I don't think we need it. I mean, it's a powerful digger, but it's just like, it's too many, uh, too much of a weight, right? Because it's a trap card. Metaverse, this isn't Necro Valley, so honestly not useful to us because it doesn't matter if I go and turn my opponent's guys into zombies during their turn. They're not tribute summoning, you know? It's not like, haha, you, I, you triggered my trap. Now you can't tribute summon your monster. You're never going to, you know, so whatever. Anti-Spell Fragrance, this is a pretty solid card. Um, it, I, there are some really powerful spells in this deck, to be honest, so I don't know how good this will be uh, in the main. Uh, definitely a side potential card. Um, I could see this as like a two of just as support. Like once you get your field up, you just boom, lock your opponent out. Depending on space, maybe even three. This is a maybe card. And then uh, Mask of Restrict, no in the main, just because there aren't enough guys that tribute constantly. Yeah, Cannon Soldier is a thing, but you already lost to them when they go first and they've done it. So, you know, pretty much um, these are the cards we're mainly working with here and we'll go here. And now that we've done a little bit of rough rogue construction here, we're going to go ahead and basically show you the culmination of this in a classic 40 card, you know, $30 three structure deck budget list, but I'm going to do it in the style of a let's build. So basically the first step of Gen is going to be to establish the core and then the goal of the deck. And our goal is actually going to be to focus on this guy. So we have two boss monsters that we discussed, but I think Ballardrock is the best thing to aim for, especially in the main, because whereas Necro Dragon is good for gaining you momentum, you know, giving you a free monster that's an additional attacker, you can't really put that material to use in this deck. And the attack boost is nice but it's better in the mid game when you've gotten things in the graveyard whereas this card is insanely powerful and fast with its negation abilities and if you read it carefully it does say during either standby phase if a face-up field spells in a field zone including your own zombie world and this guy's in your graveyard you can go and revive him although it's in defense position where he's only got 2,000 his negation effects are still live on any zombie monster and so basically it becomes as simple as yard this guy through any of your foolish burial effects and have zombie world on your field so those are our two main goals that we're going to get in order to bring out our big dragon king so of course 
The namesake card, Foolish Burial, is going to be at 1. This card doesn't even need a normal summon, so you could go ahead and activate Foolish Burial, which will help you go off with your other combos. And then uh, I like playing 3 copies of Gozuki, because we're sticking just with the structure deck here. And Gozuki is useful for its 2-pronged ability. The first thing is during your main phase, you could go ahead and just Foolish Burial a zombie from deck to grave. That's awesome, because you could send Balardrock or any tech cards that you would like, like Mizuki down the line, as we'll discuss. But on top of that, you have a second ability. If Gozuki sent to your graveyard, either from your hand or because you sent it from deck to grave, from anywhere really, you're able to go ahead and banish a different zombie monster in order to special summon any from your hand. So that means if you're already holding Ballardrock, you can yard Gozuki, even with another copy of Gozuki. And as long as you have some zombie in your grave already, you're free to go ahead and summon that Ballardrock from your hand or any other combo extender if that's what you have. So very powerful, versatile card. And as if that weren't enough, we have three more Foolish Burials in Unizombie. So this thing, actually, uh, I decided to play alongside three copies of Shiranui Solitaire in order to give us basically six copies of this. So ten copies of Foolish Burial. And you may be thinking, well, Shiranui Solitaire is great, but that doesn't that summon a level eight synchro, not seven? Yes, and uh, that's kind of the issue with this. Um, the basic combo to summon Shiranui Solitaire, tribute it, and go Unizombie. Well, and then uh, use Unizombie to yard Mizuki. will increase Unizombie's level by one uh, the attack restriction to only zombies doesn't matter in this deck because you're only you know summoning zombies anyway but the problem here is you increase to level four here so four plus four with the mizuki is going to be eight and eh, you're not going to be able to actually go and summon side from lord omega because it doesn't come in this deck obviously a great addition but the reason we're playing solitaire is because unizombie is still doubly useful in addition to that foolish burial effect where the level doesn't matter too much on this card anyway because just bring this guy back later and you can summon your necro dragon anyway the cool thing is unizombie also has a discard effect so you can target any monster on the field discard a card and if you do increase that monster's level by one again you don't always care about the level increase so much for synchro summoning because you only have one monster but by discarding cards like gozuki from your hand to trigger it for another mill or for a special summon effect or to be able to yard your baller if you've drawn it get rid of any of your other pieces you'd rather have in the grave. Unizombie is a great enabler in this deck, and so I do feel like it is worth having three copies of this, along with the Solitaire's kind of fillers, because it basically gives you then six copies of Unizombie, and again, plus three Gozuki, plus a Foolish Burial, is ten Foolish Burial cards in this deck, so we're pretty much going to get Balor Drock to the grave every single game um, that we can, you know, reasonably see. Then we also have Red Eye Zombie Necro Dragon. Basically, this is your only extra deck card, so just cram three of it in. Again, main way you summon this is when you revive Unizombie directly through Mizuki, Book of Life, or some other means like that. Um, I'll talk about why Tatsu Necro didn't make it into the cut at the end of the deck profile, but essentially that's the main way we're going to do it. Uh, very powerful, again, mid to late game when it gets more powerful and when it has more things to summon, but not necessarily going to you know be the thing you summon turn one so that's not our goal just because if you're going first you don't want to summon this thing because you're not killing anything in battle it's not very strong it doesn't do anything for you so that's why Balor Drock is our priority and then our second half for the Balor Drock goal of course was to have a field spell in play and so we're going to play three copies of zombie world not two because if we had like terraforming or something we may end up decreasing zombie world to kind of you know allow like you could do two zombie world two terraforming maybe three and two but the spell is quick to activate, and uh, main reason you want to have this is because it fills the condition and it makes everything zombie, so you could steal things, revive things, whatever. Those are the main reasons. And on top of that, I played two copies of Necroworld Banshee, because this thing, I didn't want three of it, just because if you normal summon this thing, it's pretty terrible. Because, um, I mean, yeah, you can use its effect from the field, banish it, and then activate the zombie world. Uh, but the big thing is, I don't want to use my normal summon here. I want to use it on the Unizombie, the Solitaire, the Gozuki, you know, the, the ten monsters, or cards, rather, we talked about for our Foolish Burial Engine. But the cool thing is, Banshee can banish herself from the graveyard, which means she can be the target of any one of those cards, and it will get us the zombie world. So, honestly, you could get away with playing one copy of it, Playing two makes it so in instances where you have Foolish Burial or something, or maybe a Unizombie, you can go ahead and discard this from your hand or from your deck, um, and then you're able to basically have this either as a free normal summon if you have the Foolish Burial, or yard this with Unizombie. It gives you some more flexibility. It's not terrible if you draw it. And the fact that it's a quick effect that lets you activate Zombie World means you can go ahead and yard this thing, have it in the grave, and then during your opponent's turn, boom, banish it, summon out, or activate your Zombie World, and then you're able to go ahead and, you know, go Balardrock 
before the standby phase is done, or rather when the standby phase comes around, you'll get Balderdrac out. And if your opponent kills your zombie world, this ends up becoming insurance because you can activate another one during your opponent's turn. So that's the real power of this card. So I like the two copies of it. You can get away with one. I wouldn't recommend three in the build just because you don't really want to commit your normal summon to it all the time. And uh, two copies will let you see it frequently enough, I feel. Because uh, realistically, you could get away with one just because you could yard it and it'll still be useful anyway. And speaking of which, uh, we're playing one copy of Glow Up Bloom. This kind of uh, completes that, you know, two two part here so we have the field spell and we have the monster glow up bloom makes it so that if you already have your zombie world access maybe you've just drawn the spell right you can go ahead and send this card to the graveyard through a discard through uh um, yarding it directly if you had link karibo that'd be a great way as well but we don't have that unfortunately in this deck basically Yard this guy directly through one of your 10 searchers, and then you banish it in order to special summon Balordrak directly to the field, or even if you don't have Zombie World out yet, you can add it to your hand, and then maybe you have something else that will let you go. Uh, maybe you have Yuna Zombie, and you can just dump the Balordrak that way, uh, if that ends up happening. You know, there, there are some options that you have with Glow Up Bloom in this deck at just one copy, and so that's why I like playing it as just a tech choice that will help us access Balordrak uh, more directly if we're able to maybe special summon it from our hand, through like a Gozuki type of a combo off of Unizombie. So that'd be Unizombie, uh, disc uh, sends to the graveyard Glow Up Bloom, adds Bellardrock to hand. You could discard the Bellardrock, or rather um, that would set it up, or you could discard uh, Gozuki if you have it and just special summon Bellardrock by banishing some other zombies. So interesting pa uh, play patterns there to give you some flexibility. And then we have three Mizuki. So this starts off like the tech choices and this section I just call the Monster Reborn section. Three Mizuki because this guy doesn't need an introduction but basically you can banish it from grave to target a zombie in your grave and special summon it that's it it's insanely powerful um the fact that it's recyclable by a lot of cards is amazing as well even without cyframe lord omega we do have some means of bringing it out and um, this card is just an all-around awesome thing it's free discard food it's a great target at all times as a combo extender just there's no reason not to play through it and it's a 17 under attack level 4 monster then we have three Book of Life. The only thing with Book of Life is it's a monster born for your zombie uh, in your graveyard, but you have to target one of your opponent's grave monsters and banish it. So that means you can't play turn one if you're going first. So to remedy this, because it's still a powerful card, it's not once per turn, and I do want to play three of them, we're going to go ahead and play three copies of Drag Down into the grave, which makes this deck a lot more fast-paced and aggressive. Look at your opponent's hand, rip the best card out of it, and just set all your, uh, your spells and traps before, so your opponent's forced to discard one of your key monsters, even if it ends up just being a zombie, uh, just like a random zombie, you're able to go ahead and banish it for Gozuki or for something else, uh, revive it with Mizuki or whatever. So it gives you a lot of free reign um, on how that game is played, and Book of Life will then have pretty much instant accessibility, even on turn one. So I like Drag Down to the grave for this and um fun fact with this too is it does not have a once per turn clause either because it's also an old card so you're basically able to go ahead and get extra draws and grave setup through that and uh that's a cool thing then we have two zombie master this thing basically uh it, it has the risks obviously because if it gets interrupted then you lose the effect entirely if he's no longer on the field but the monster, uh, monster born effect can't be understated, and especially if you consider the fact that as long as you have any zombie already and are legally able to activate this effect, you can discard any zombie from your graveyard and immediately target and summon that because you target after sending. So basically that's just how Yu-Gi-Oh works. You can't activate this effect if you have no zombie because you don't have anything, you're not legally able to activate it, you can't even begin to discard even though that would create the situation, right? But if you have anything in the grave already, feel free to summon anything between your hand and graveyard, which is a very powerful effect, and I do like Zombie Master, it's just a classic, and still very powerful, it's just the risks exist with it, right? Then, for more tech, two zombie necronize. I figured two of this would be fine just because it is the hard, you know, once per turn. That way we can capitalize on some other cards that we can extend our plays with as opposed to, you know, get locked down by the hard once per turn clause. And that's why I ended up going with just two copies of this if we need more of them. I mean, we can recycle it over, you know, the three turn span, play it twice. So still an interesting card nonetheless. And um, it's change of heart. So I, I think it's worth playing overall. Then we play three copies of our crazy trap card return of the zombies again it serves as a pseudo monster reborn but it's also a non-targeting removal of your opponent's monster that's uh, gonna get banished since we are playing three zombie world and two banshees to bring it out this card should be live a good 
chunk of the time. And the cool thing with the, the Banshee, you remember, is if you're able to yard her as an extra card, because you have access to Balor uh, Balardrock already, you can just go ahead and just yard that with one of your 10 cards, and you have access to the field spell. So uh, in some ways, we have even more access to the zombie world through Banshee than we would through Terraforming. So I definitely like Return of the Zombies. It's just an insanely powerful card and worth playing. Then the last five cards to flesh out the deck, we have three Shared Ride. I know this is a hard once per turn, but it's still really, really cool in that you're basically able to max C type of, you know, stall your opponent out, especially if they're playing something like Sky Strikers. So very powerful card. It helps you dig for your pieces. And um, it's amazing that they gave us a card this flexible and powerful in a, a structure deck like this. They kept it for us in the uh, TCG. And finally, last two cards in the main deck are two copies of Burial from a Different Dimension. Uh, think of it as filler, if you will, but again, the fact that Mizuki with this card, just one Mizuki, ends up becoming This is a Monster Born is Awesome. If you have multiple Mizukis, they're all viable. And um, as the game goes later into the stages, you're going to be able to resolve this for one, maybe two Mizukis, and it's going to be awesome because of that. Yeah, your other spells, like your Necronize and your, um, your Trap, like your Zombie whatever thing we just talked about, the... Uh, Return of the Zombies ends up, you know, they have the ability to recycle things to your deck, but this is more powerful uh, for that Mizuki play. So I do like it at two, just so that we're able to go ahead and maximize, you know, our combos basically from this. And then the last thing I want to talk about are just some cards that didn't make the cut. So Tatsu Necro didn't make it simply because there's no additional value created by this card. Yes, it gives you access to the Synchro, but again, turn one, I'm not trying to summon the Synchro. I can't do anything with a monster that can't attack going first, and um, it's not the best thing even if I'm going second because, yeah, I could kill something in battle, but then I need to have Zombie World for it to be good. Uh, it doesn't give me any free resources is the biggest reason on top of that because, yeah, I can normal summon this, and without any other setup, I just go and summon my monster but I have to banish this and the card from my hand and everything else I'd rather just send to the grave. So it's easier actually to go and regain resources, just revive Unizombie itself after making a play than to use Tatsu Necro as your level three tuner. So, I mean, it's not a bad card. It gives you an easy access to the level seven. I just didn't want to lose resources banishing cards from my hand when I have Unizombie who will actually gain me resources in the long run. Tristan and Monstergate fall into the same category of these take up your normal summon and with nine cards that need my normal summon to get foolish burial effects I wanted to use those rather than you know a uh, utility toolbox type of grave re reverse toolboxer and then a monster gate that I have to tribute my monster in order to get a random guy onto the board so not bad cards it's just I did not want to run them in this strategy because the normal summon becomes really important Goblin Zombie is awesome again in a Link deck, but we don't have any way to send this card to the graveyard effectively to claim that effect once we put him there, and so that's why he's not in here. Powerful card, just no tools to actually access his effect and claim that search. Anti-Spell Fragrance, basically a very powerful side deck card, but I don't want to main it because we are playing uh, the, a ton of really powerful spells that aren't restricted very much to once per turn. Like Burial, you can activate multiple of those. You can activate multiple Book of Lifes. Um, drag Down to the Graves. There are a lot of really powerful spell cards that you gain a lot of advantage for. And yeah, there's always the, uh, the idea of, oh, well, why don't you just go and set your Anti-Spell Fragrance and then Activate all your spells, the next turn flip anti-spell. Yeah, that works, but it works better in a game 2 situation, and this deck is playing so many aggressive spells that I feel the flow of the deck is a lot better if you allow it to go with all of its plays, and then anti-spell can be brought in in the later game. So it's cool that Konami actually gave us cards that work very well in the sided games. And then, in a similar vein, Kash is awesome for removal, but um, until I read a... Uh, the word is it return of the zombies it was what i was thinking would remove it, like extra links and all these other dumb things but side deck for this card it's not the easiest thing to search i mean it's it's, it's not impossible i suppose you could glow up bloom it to your hand or something but um you know return of the zombies does a lot in your main in terms of removing your opponent's monsters if the zombie necronize Stealing doesn't take care of it. And so uh, Kasha is just good in the side in the instance where you need to just clear out a mass number of monsters. Um, you still have access to it, but I don't think it has a particular spot in the main. 
And there you have it, the very first episode of the totally renovated Rogue Construction series where basically I go through and explain in depth my thought processes for how I am approaching deck building from the ground up. And in this case, a very fun one for me because I got to actually look at some new cards and come up with things on the fly. Definitely let me know what you guys think of this series down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, especially because it's such a new idea that I haven't tried before. And I don't know, I had a lot of fun with this thing, so I hope you guys did as well. So thanks, guys. This is JD Gaming. Hope you guys enjoyed, as always, and I'll see you guys next time. That's the end of this video, but there's plenty more where it came from. I invite you to explore the playlists on screen to see what else I have to offer. And if you really liked what you saw today, consider subscribing to JD Gaming for more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. Thanks, guys. This is JD Gaming. Hope you guys enjoyed, as always, and I'll see you guys next time.